It was not to be. Looks like the Sixers maybe a little bit of road tripping caught up with them just a bit as we welcome you here to Sixers Post Game Live brought to you by Kyoto Insurance. Thanks for staying up with us, Amy Fiddle and Mark Jackson. You know, they had this four game road trip. No Joel Embiid. We knew that heading in. And then you're thinking, all right, maybe you can eke out another one like you did in Houston. But they just didn't have their legs, it seemed like, in this one, Mark. They did. And we could never find our momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this, can we give props to Chicago, too? They did a good job of what we call forming the wall. When a guy tried to penetrate that ball, preferably Maxi, they put three and four guys mm -hmm. in his line of sight, so it was hard for him to get in. And I thought he took a lot of tough shots tonight, as his number says the same. Yeah, you're looking at overall shooting, just 23% from three, 39% from the yes. field. That's exactly what happened. And Tyrese Maxi, I mean, he did get 20 points, but it was a hard-earned 20 on 8 of 22 shooting. Another tough night shooting from the three-point land, and he did not get to the free-throw line like he did in yeah. Houston. You're looking at Houston, who's 14 of 15, but just 2 of 5 tonight. Is that just them You're showing him so many different looks in the paint? Uh, yes, it had a lot to do with that. I mean, a lot to do with the amount of guys was in the paint when he penetrated the lane, as well as just off his, he was off tonight. You mm -hmm. know, I thought Chicago did a really good job of collapsing their defense. And Sixers shot 23 and a half percent from three, which means the lanes were leaving narrower for him to mm -hmm. get through because he didn't shoot the three well. Yeah, so you're looking, obviously, you know, Tyrese Maxey has not Indeed. fared all that well with no Joel Embiid. Not that anybody really would because you have a 30-plus point score, the reigning MVP, to help you with the offensive load. But when it comes just on him and you have the defensive effort, you see it comes that much harder for him to try to create like he usually does. Absolutely. We got Joel Embiid on your team. A lot of things come easy. You know, unfortunately, tonight when he's not out there, even though Maxi coming off an incredible game last night, mm -hmm. tonight just wasn't his night. And once again, we don't want to take no credit away from Chicago, uh, Chicago Bulls. They did a wonderful job guarding. Yeah, I, I think that you're seeing this, how many people when he goes into that lane, mm -hmm. how many of those jerseys, the Bulls jerseys that you saw, you know, even if they weren't there, they were flashing like they were going to be moving over. And so that has maybe a little bit of hesitation on Maxi's round. He was not alone in the poor shootings. We mentioned, you know, just 39%. This is a good shooting team. They just not have it. Sometimes when you're at that last leg of the road trip so and it was a back-to-back -back. they didn't get into obviously early in the morning can can that creep up a little bit in this one you can't absolutely. find that second gear absolutely a lot of times you see the Sixers who's a wonderfully shooting uh, three-point shooting mm -hmm. team struggle from the arc like that a lot of times it can mean dead legs meaning your legs as the game progresses get fatigue and fatigue and it's hard for them to make shots I know a lot of momentum is generated from your feet all the way up to your hands and the Sixers didn't do that yeah and you know you know you look at previous games they're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the league so tonight that kind of favorite Chicago yeah, they couldn't get that second gear. Absolutely. We talked about the point guard matchup in this one, mm. and it was a real good one. Uh, Kobe White um, showing that his range and his size really helps this Bulls team run. Obviously, we saw Alex Caruso in there at the forward position, a guy that a lot of people are talking about, including this gentleman next to me, about being maybe a sixer. And then DeMar DeRozan, and then going with Tyrese Maxey. How did you think that played out? Because I feel like DeMar DeRozan and Kobe White are pretty a formidable, formidable duo when you think about what they bring to that backcourt. Amy, the raw, DeMar DeRozan is the pillar of consistency. Like, he just comes in mm -hmm. every night, and he's he's only about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, but the way he just plays, he's, he's not going to hover around that three-point line. He's going to get down here. He's going to put these shoulders on you. He's going to make you follow him. He's just going to wear you down, like mm -hmm. almost like a heavyweight boxer. And Cody White, this guy from UNC... I know he wasn't expected to be a one-and-done guy. He just progressed over the, his course at UNC. Then he comes to the NBA. Every year he gets better. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, with ball, the boss um, kid being out, he's getting this, all his playing right. time. He's flourishing in it. So those two guys pretty much carried this team, and as well as Drummond killing the glass. Yeah, some people forgot that Lonzo Ball is actually a bull. Uh, he's <laughs> been out with injury, obviously. Unfortunately, that's been set a lot of his career. But you mentioned Andre Drummond. What a night for the former Sixer. He had a bit of a resurgent year when he was here in the Sixers uniform. He credits that. Uh, and Doc Rivers at the time for really helping him kind of get back on track. 23 rebounds. Most rebounds by an opposing player against the Sixers this season. He averages 20 rebounds. 15 points. But the thing is, you look at his numbers and then you look at how many minutes he played. He got 23. He picked up like his 21st rebound in about his 23rd minute. He plays under 30 minutes and he gets these numbers. He is the subject of our Union Presents Lager Up. And you saw the crowd give him a nice uh, round of applause. His offensive game, we know what it is. It is what it is. But what he he brings to the table with those 23 rebounds. I mean, it shows up in the stat sheet, but it also shows up elsewhere. It does, I mean, he, he's, he's a bull. He's mm -hmm. a bull, and he gets in that lane, and he just causes so much havoc. Watch this. And he's so athletic. People forget how athletic he is. Mm -hmm. Listen, 
15, 20 years ago, this is a max, super max yes. player. But now with the game, it's like wings. We don't really need rebounding like that. You know, it, he's just kind of being phased out the game, which is unfortunate. But every time he gets an opportunity, whether with us, he goes to Chicago, he does the same mm -hmm. thing. He creates havoc. He's a darn good player. He is a starting center in this league. It's unfortunate a guy with so much skill but a unique talent to rebound a ball like that doesn't get much respect in the league. Yeah, it's interesting because you mention it. If this was a couple of years ago, there would be no question. He would be, you know, an all-star, and you're thinking about, oh, he brings so much to the table. That's just not how the game is played now. And obviously, like Dwight Howard, and we talked about in the pregame show, you know, these are two of the better backups that Joel Embiid ever had. They both weren't able to play the game at the end in the playoffs because you're looking at his stat line from the free throw line, the three for ten. You can yeah. obviously employ that. His offensive game is limited, but when you see him out there, and Mark and I were talking about this before we came on, you hope that he gets another chance to play on a team that is a winning team because he can bring so much to the table. Absolutely, Amy. You know, because of the, the, the two, here's the two knocks on Dwight Howard and, and Drummond. Uh, they saying, Yes, they're excellent rebounders. They're very good shot blockers, but they can't guard pick and rolls. Mm -hmm. They said teams will put them in pick and rolls every time and, and they throw their defense off kilter. So what they do is they sit them. They said we can't play in the, in the counts, so we're going to sit you. So that's why players like him and that's why Dwight was playing in Taiwan instead right. of here in the NBA. And it's unfortunate because I think his schemes around it, but the way the game is played there when every yeah. body can shoot the three. It's hard. We have a liability out there who cannot guard the pick and roll. Because the majority, sorry, Amy, cut yeah. you off. Majority of plays ending with a dribble handoff or pick and roll. That's why it's so important to be able to guard it. Yeah, and they just, that's just not their role. But uh, Drummond has been in the starting role because Nikola Vucevic has been out with an injury. He's also expected to miss the game here uh, with the Bulls and the Sixers here in Philadelphia on Tuesday. So Drummond, I'm sure, will get a nice round of applause when he suits back up here at the Wells Fargo Center. There's three blocks, two also contributing uh, to a really nice defensive effort as one of the reasons the Sixers uh, did not get this win only got to 92 points. We're going to take our first time out here on Sixers Post Game Live brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. We're going to hear from Nick Nurse in Chicago coming up. Stick with us. Score, you can see some of the shooting numbers and they are not pretty. You, you can see the assist 24 assists to 7 turnovers. That normally is a very good ratio. And you're thinking, oh, okay, this looks good. And then you go up and see, well, they're passing people. <laughs> then no one was, uh, no one was having it. No one's having it. You didn't, you didn't capitalize on the 16 turnovers from the Bulls. You didn't capitalize at the free throw line. You didn't capitalize beyond the arc. And you didn't capitalize when you had some good looks out there, Mark. And that's why you lose 105-92. Absolutely. That's I mean, how to lowest the season on mm -hmm. 92 points. It's unfortunate because that ratio of assist to turnovers is big time for us. But it, we had so many other things that didn't go our way. Our defense wasn't there. We couldn't quite get we couldn't quite get the looks we wanted that was necessarily generated by Maxi or Tobias mm -hmm. getting in there and Chicago just seemed to have our way they seem to they, they actually seen the big boys. Yeah. I hate to use that term. They seem to be very more aggress the aggressor tonight. So they're only going to they're gonna play the Bulls three times. They played them, obviously, earlier in the season with Joel Embiid. They lost that game. That was back on December 18th. It was a good game, but they lost it. Uh, and then, obviously, they're going to play on Tuesday. So it begs the question, are the Bulls just maybe a bad matchup for the Sixers, or is this just a one-off tonight? Uh, you got to respect the record. Mm -hmm. You know, what does the record say? So with that being said, I, if, if the, whoever has the edge, the better team. So I think Chicago just plays better basketball than us. And it's unfortunate for us because we, they haven't had Levine. Right. They haven't had Levine. So they played better. They played a lot better. And not just versus us people against a lot of teams. So it almost makes Levine so much more expendable. But a lot of people are going to question that contract he has. But with that being said, Chicago just seems to have our number so far. Come on down. Come on down. You, you're expendable. There's a couple of teams that would go ahead and take Zach Levine's uh, services 